Hello, my name's Chris, I'm an addict. Um, so a lot of what she said, I started at a young age. Um, I, I don't know, I hung out, my mom and dad are addicts, they've been addicts and alcoholics my entire life. I remember seeing them getting hauled off to rehab, they weren't really very disciplinary for me. Um, I was a smart kid, like really smart, smarter than a lot of the other kids, but um, for some reason, Knowing, maybe knowing that my mom and dad were addicts and alcoholics, there was just something I didn't, that culture seemed different or cool. There's things I wanted to know about it. I don't know why. I don't know why I would rather learn about that than learn about, you know, cars or, you know, video games or, or things like that. It just, that didn't intrigue me. But these certain people in school, I thought they were cool. So I wanted to know what they wanted to know. And um, like she said, all the precursors were there saw that my parents went through it, but I thought I was going to be different. I'm going to be different. I'm not going to be like that. I'm not going to get locked up. I'm not going to have my house get repossessed. I'm not going to see my parents' cars get repossessed. I'm not going to go through that. That's going to be different. I'm not stupid. I'm not an idiot. I hung out with people that got high and used and drank, but they didn't get locked up because they didn't steal shit. <laughs> so, like, I thought it was different. Like, I'm not getting involved with these people that are committing crimes, right? So I'm different. But, you know, I filled out this little thing of then and now, and I even put a couple dots beside them. Um, have I ever tried to harm myself at that age? No. But later, yeah. I, I tried to uh, kill myself. I tried to drive a car into a wall. Now, it was a lot of it was based on depression. Because when I use and drink, I get depressed. Because I kind of know that it's kind of behavior I shouldn't be doing. But I get down to this end of this rope and I don't like myself, so I just want to just end it. Like, I don't know if anybody can relate with that. But I just feel like I'm a complete failure. So I just, I would, that, that was a behavior. Do I know anybody who was incarcerated? Not then. Today I do. Um, did I need someone to talk to? Then I wrote, no, I didn't think I now I know today I have to. I have to share. I have to talk to people. I have to tell people what's in my heart. I tell you this because if you were honest about where you're at and asked for help, I don't think you're going to get in trouble. I think people are going to be like, okay, this is real. Like, you're never going to. My dad, one thing my dad taught me is you cannot save, you can't save your ass and your face at the same time. If you want to get help, you have to speak up. You can't, you just don't get it through osmosis. This stuff just doesn't all of a sudden happen. I just pray that you can find some guidance or some help before you're locked behind a cell wall. Because I've spent, I don't know, probably three or four trips. It's not fun. Um, I don't think anybody thinks jail is fun. I, I hope not. Um, but definitely, I thought uh, uh, today I do believe. Marijuana is a gateway drug. Like she said, if I was to go there with it, it wouldn't take long before I would start getting involved in everything else. Now, I didn't, uh, what, what started me off is I had a few friends, they were doing that, they were into that, and I partied a little bit, but my girlfriend was completely against it. So I had lived two different lives. I was one way in front of this group of people, and then I was this way in front of another group of people. And this one was, they go to church and they acted that certain way, and then this people partied like, uh, had, like rock stars or whatever. So I lived these two different lives. Now, guess what happened when the relationship with the girl broke up? I just was 100% all in to the other. 100% all in. And it didn't take long before I was in, let's see, the Koala Center, I think it would have been back in the 90s, Parkview Behavioral Health. I think is what it's called now. Um, I thought I was different or special. I don't know. I don't know what it was about that lifestyle that felt like I wanted to be a part. I knew that I felt like I was more accepted into that group. I felt like maybe less judgmental. But today, when I look at the type of friends that I have in my life, do they build me up? Are they supportive of me being healthy? Are they encouraging are they do they are they good people none of those people today when I think back I even wrote down a few notes 
the people that I hung out with when I was in high school, um, Jake died of a car accident. He blew a .34 when he hit a telephone pole, which is 8, 16, 24, 34 times over the legal limit. He didn't know he even, yeah, I don't even know. Patrick, my friend, died of an overdose in his kitchen at the age of 36. Died of a heart attack. Uh, another guy was hit by a train. Uh, decided he wanted to run across the, the tracks. I don't know why. Maybe he wanted to commit suicide. Uh, and another one died of a heart attack at 23. I have one friend that I went that I hung out with in high school that's still alive today. You know, so that's just that's what happens. That's that's the pathway that I that I wanted to go down. I don't and I, I still I can't tell you what it was about that life, but I just wanted to be a part of it. I thought it was cool. I thought they were cool, I was in, but it uh, nearly, it cost me, let's see, two divorces, um, several repossessions on cars, a bankruptcy, jail time, uh, misery, I got kicked out of the Marine Corps, I was a, a Marine, um, that decided to use while I was there, I got kicked out, I had a lot of good things going for me, but I made these st stupid choices. Um, but, I'm, but I'm not stupid. It's just, you know, I don't know what to tell you. What I'm, I know that I was in a, she, what she was talking about, some dangerous places to be for me, um, depression, too. When I'm a depressed person, I, I mean, I know this is talking about drugs, but I don't know why I feel like I should share this, but there's been a lot of times that I've chosen to go down that path when I've been in a not very well mental state, meaning... I hated myself, I thought I was a piece of shit, I, uh, I didn't have any direction, and this thing gave me a little bit of comfort. I mean, I'm not going to play games and tell you I didn't like using, because it, you know, it, it served a purpose, but uh, it doesn't take long before it wrapped its hands around my neck and, and just took me down. Um, you know, I, I thank God that I, didn't, I wasn't in prison for a long time. Uh, but I would get, I'd get, uh, I'd get arrested, and I'd get kind of half-ass cleaned up. I'd get a little bit. I'd, I'd put people at bay. I'd start a little bit of a program or something, but I'd not that ever stuck. Today, I truly believe that something I have to do for the rest of my life is I have to go to meetings or talk to other people. I have to continue to share. I have to continue to talk about my life and what happened in it, and that was. I just wanted a party turned into a, a depressed wreck, you know, and then it turned into suicidal thoughts and tendencies, turned into I didn't care about anyone or anything. I hurt the people I loved, um, you know. So I'd say reach out, you know, if you've got that. Like I said, you can't save your ass and your face at your same time. I don't think, I'm, I don't know the truth, but I think your probation officers or the people around you your adults in your life would rather you say, hey, I'm struggling with this issue, and I don't know what to do. Because you're young. You don't have the answers. Shit, I don't have the answers. I have, to, I have to call my friends and get some guidance. There ain't nothing wrong with saying you don't know. I mean, you have to. You have to reach out. I call my boy Hans here. <laughs> you know, what am I doing, man? Talk me, talk me through this. You know, I believe that if you did that, in your life, you're going to find people are going to they're going to respect that that you're asking for help. I mean, I don't. I hope it. I hope it wouldn't happen. But I think if you'd raise your hand and, and speak up and ask for some guidance and direction, there is so many people that would give that to you. I don't think they would be like, get out of here. I hope not. And if so, stand up for your own life. Keep you know, keep it going. Um, no one else. I mean, at the age of 18. When you're out of your parents' lives, they're not going to be hovering over you. You know, it was to me, it was like a leash had been cut off of me, and now I do whatever I want without these people on my back. And what did I do? I, I, I partied like a rock star, and then I saw my buddy in a pair of dress blues pull up in a Cobra Mustang, and I said, That's what I want. I want a Mustang. I want to go live in California. And uh, you know, that was a good thing for me to join the Marines. I, I really joined the Marines to get away from that life that I knew that I was headed down the hole. 
because those friends of mine, they were dying around me. I'm like, I gotta get out of here, I gotta make a change. But I took me with me, you know. Geographical cure, moving away, new set of friends, new this, new that. There had to be a change which within me, inside of me, and no one can give that to you. You have to fight for that. You have to fight for it, you have to want it, you know. Um, but, uh, Make an impact. How do I make? I don't know what I do, what I say to, to, to people to make an impact. I really don't. I just say, like I said, I think the, the biggest thing would be, you cannot save your ass and your face at the same time. If you need some help, reach out and ask for it. Um, at the end of my addiction, uh, the day my son was born, I ate 65 Vicodin. I was eating 65. 60 plus pills a day. They said my liver was shutting down. Um, and people didn't even know I was using. I was, uh, 15 at a time is what I would pop. I was also smoking methamphetamines every day. I got busted for, for cooking it at a lab. And this is while I have a wife and kids. And they had no clue. Like I said, I had two different lives. And I was pretty good at that. Because I've been a salesman my whole life, so I've been a pretty good bullshitter. Um, but it, it catches up to you. You can't, I, I, you, you like to think you're slick, but you're really not, you know. People see through it. People see through it. Um, just say, be yourself. But uh, there ain't nothing wrong. If somebody around you, but something I would think about when I was that age, if I was to say, you know what, I think that I'm an addict or I think I need some help, and they would say something negative about that, like, oh, man, you're a little punk, or you're weak, or whatever. You know, uh, they are poison. They're poison in your life. And you need to get them out of your life. You need to, to whatever it takes. They're, they're poison to you. People like that in your life will never support you. You know, when I was in jail, they weren't there to pick me up. They didn't give me no money. They didn't say, hey, how's your wife and kids doing? None of them. You know, I dropped them like a lead balloon, like I should have done years ago. Um, and, I, and like I said, I surround myself with people that encourage me, people that build me up. You know, I help other people. Like today, how my story's changed is, you know, I was that guy that was a, a complete addict. I'd still, I'd say, I still am. Once you are, you always are. Um, but now, um, you know, I, I got out of the Marines, and uh, I. Got by with the skin of my teeth, got an honorable discharge, so I have VA benefits. But I went back to school there, and I asked them if they would help me to get a degree, because I have a disability today from when I was in. And uh, so they paid for my schooling. So uh, I took a class to become a certified peer support specialist, which basically means I've been there, done that, like I used to be an addict. I, you know, I had some PTSD, I had these issues, so I had a lived experience. I don't know, what does it say on the back of the shirt? It's a credible messenger. So I have a credible message to carry to other people that I've been there, done that. I've lived that life, and I got a little training, but now they're paying for all my school, you know, to go be a recovery coach or addictions. I'm going to get a four-year degree, and they're going to pay for it all, you know, which is amazing to say that five years ago it wouldn't be this way. Not at all. Um, but uh, I remember my family always was like, God, you could have just been somebody more. Chris, you were just, you're the smartest out of all the grandkids. And then here are my cousin, one of them is a pharmacist, the other one owns a business. And there I was, work, you know, nothing wrong with working in a factory, but, you know, there I was working in a temp job making $9 an hour. Like, why are you there? Like, well, I'm there because of the choices I made, because dope and booze and hanging out with the boys was more important than anything else in my life, period. I put the drugs and the alcohol ahead of my kids. I put it ahead of anything in my life. I did not have car insurance or a driver's license for five years of my life. And I had a $50,000 car. Fucking priorities, right? Why do you drive this car you can't even pay insurance on? Well, no, because the dope, the dope man was more important. But, I mean, everything in my life was that way. 
making apologies at Christmas, you know? Like just, I just could never put two and two together. And it always, always started with, let me, you know what, hey man, you wanna hit this little bug here? You know, y'all get this vape pen, man. It's strawberry earthquake. Hell, who knows? You know, there's a million different flavors. You know, let me hit that thing once. And it would not take long before I'm buying pills again. I'm shooting up heroin again. You know, and I just become a, a person that I did not want to be. You know, I'm not going to get too spiritual with you, but today I, I, I do go to church. You know, I combine God with it. You know, as you hear, my, uh, my, my language probably still isn't the cleanest, but uh, God loves me regardless. So, um, But I get something there. I, I, he, some spirituality. I, I do some praying. I do some meditating. Uh, it just sounds weird. I just sit there quiet. I play these things on Facebook, little guided meditations. And it just helps me clear my mind. Because I do believe that I that some mental illness might be part of my story and part of my in my family. Um, so those are the things that I have to focus on. Uh, but you know, I, I look at my I've got I've got four teenage boys right now. I've got a sophomore, I've got a freshman, and I got an eight uh, two sixth graders. I just think I thank God that they're not in any trouble, but I don't know what I could tell them if they started going down that path other than, you know, I would, I would love them. I'd try to love them even more. I'll tell them that they, 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 they can tell me anything that they need to say and that I'm pleased to reach out uh, and ask for help to somebody. That, Like I said, you can't save your ass and your face at the same time. And if those friends around you don't want to think you're whatever, talk shit about you wanting to get help, then they're, you know, they're not going to be the ones that are super successful or, or maybe even exist and have a life later on. Um, I can say that anybody that I knew that I got high with as a freshman in high school, none of them today have a happy life. Very, I, I can't, I can't say. None of them. None of them. They're all, they've all been incarcerated. They all have had several divorces, lost kids through the system, given up their children. Um, and they all regret the actions that they've taken, but I don't know if very many of them know that the reason why, and I know this today, the reason why 99% of the problems were in my life is because I refused to see that my problem was the fact that I wanted to smoke dope and I wanted to be part of the boys. You know, none of, uh, all my problems re revolve around that. Revolve around the selfishness that, that I lived in. Everything revolved around me. Everything revolved around what I wanted. And uh, I just wanted to be cool. I wanted, no, I wanted everybody off my back. If everybody just, just, just leave me alone. I'd be okay. And then when everybody left me alone, it didn't take long before it, the people that started infecting my life were, you know, uh, officers of the law. They started reaching out to me because you just can't, <laughs> you just can't, you, you just can't do, you just can't run like that and expect to not get caught. I mean, you think you're slick and sly and this and that, but over time, it it, it happens. It just happens. You, you don't get away with it for long. You might get away with it for a while, but it'll reach up and grab you. And then you'll be bawling like a little bitch, like I did. Wah, wah, wah. But there, it's it's not too late, but they ain't trying to hear the, oh, all the BS that's coming out of your mouth at that time. It's a little late, you know. So I know I had to look in that a mirror, that piece of metal that they had bolted to the wall, you know, you can't see yourself in it very well in the jail, I'm like, what am I doing? Who the hell are you? You know, don't you want something better with your life? 
what, what, what do I do? What, what, and what did I do? Is I reached out, I went to some, some of these AA or NA meetings, I went to a rehab unit, I called the VA hospital, and I <coughs> stuck my neck out. I, like I said before, I, I, I can't save my ass and my face, so I lost face. I had to go up there and say, hey, I'm an addict, I'm, in a, fool. I'm a fool, I'm in a bind, I don't know what to do. <coughs> I need some help, I need some guidance, and then listened to what they said and then took their guidance, you know. And that was changing my playground and my playmates. That means I can't go hang out at the dope house with my boys and not expect to get high. It's gonna happen. I can't go to the bar and hang out there and not get drunk after a period of time. I might be strong that one or two times, but no, it just it just happened. So I had to surround myself with people who I thought were winners, you know. Sometimes today, if I were to look at them, I think these winners are corny. But uh, today I love them. Am I going over on time? Am I perfect? <laughs> I don't know. I like to, I like to ramble too. But, um, but yeah, today I have coming up on 14 months. Um, yeah. Things can change, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good.